Hi guys, this is C.A. Balakrishna. Till now we have revised SA200, SA210, SA230 and SA240. Now in this video we will be revising SA250. Consideration of laws and regulations in an audit of financial statements. Now before entering into the standard, let us understand a small point. Basically for the purpose of this standard, all the laws are divided into two types. Okay, The first type is laws that are having direct effect on the financial statement and the second type would be all other laws now how to identify whether the law is having direct effect on the financial statements or not now if you comply with that particular law it will affect the amounts that are reflected in the financial statements okay if you comply with any law that will affect the amounts that are reflected in the financial statements and also, even though you don't comply with any law, it will also affect the amounts that are reflected in the financial statements. Okay, how? Let us take an example. Income Tax Act. Let's say you have complied with all the provisions of Income Tax Act. Okay, by complying with all the provisions of Income Tax Act, you have arrived at provision for income tax. Okay, you will be showing this provision for income tax in profit and loss statement. Okay, if you comply with all the provisions of Income Tax Act, then you will arrive at correct provision for income tax. That means, even though you are complying with Income Tax Act, the amount that is reflected in the financial statement is being affected. Okay, even though it is being affected positively only. But the amount is being affected. Okay. It is secondary whether it is being affected positively or negatively. But primarily the amount is being affected. Okay. If you comply with the provisions of income tax act, you will arrive at correct provision for income tax in the profit and loss statement. That means you complying with income tax, the amount that is reflected in the financial statement is being affected. Now let's say you don't comply with the income tax act. Okay. You have arrived at provision for income tax act of provision for income tax without complying with the uh, provisions that are stated in the income tax act. In that case, you will arrive at wrong provision for income tax. Okay, in the financial statements, you will be reflecting wrong provision for income tax. Here, if you don't comply with income tax act, the provision for income tax is affected negatively. Okay. Even though you don't comply, some amount that is reflected in the financial statement is being affected. Okay. Now, this type of loss will be known as loss that are having direct effect on the financial statements. Hope you are clear with this. Now, other loss. In case of other loss, if you comply with the other loss, it will not affect the amounts that are present in the financial statements. Okay. If you have complied with other loss, that complying with other law will not affect the amount stated in the financial statements but if you don't comply with other laws it will affect the amount stated in the financial statements how example let's say uh, environmental loss okay environmental loss now let's say you are uh, some vehicle manufacturing companies now the vehicle manufacturing companies how to comply with bs6 norms okay in case they have complied with all the BS6 norms, okay, they have complied with this law. If they have complied, it does not affect any of the amount that is present in the financial statements, okay. Following the provisions of BS6 norms doesn't affect any of the amounts that are stated in the financial statements. But let's say the company has not complied with the provisions of these BS6 norms. In that case, company might have to pay penalties okay in that case the amount of penalties that is reflected in the financial statements will get affected due to non-complying of the bs6 norms okay thereby since complying with this law will not affect the amount uh, amounts that are reflected in the financial statement but not complying with the law will reflect will affect the amount stated in the financial statements these types of laws will be covered under this other laws this is a major classification of loss for the purpose of sa 250 hope you understood this classification now <coughs> now we'll enter into the standard what will be dealt by this standard 
basically i have divided this entire standard into four parts first part deals with okay first part deals with what is the responsibility of management with respect to uh, laws and regulations okay that will be first part second part deals with responsibility of auditors relating to laws and regulations and third part deals with indications of non compliance okay what are the indications that will give or uh, what are the indications in which there is a probability or possibility that non compliance of law might have taken place okay what are those indications that we will be discussing and finally reporting part okay once we complete these four parts our standard gets completed now first of all management responsibility to comply with laws and regulations firstly okay the primary responsibility to comply with laws and regulations and to uh, prevent non compliance with laws and regulations is of management okay auditor is not responsible uh, to prevent non compliance of laws and regulations by the entity okay auditor is just responsible to check whether the entity has complied with all the laws and regulations okay this is the first point that you have to remember it will be responsibility of the management to comply with laws and regulations now for the purpose of complying the laws and regulations what the management will do first of all management can maintain a register okay it can maintain a register and in this register it can list all the laws and regulations that are applicable to it okay so that it will be easy for the management to comply with all those laws okay if it is having an idea of what are the laws and regulations that are applicable to it it will be uh, easy for the management to comply with all those laws and regulations thereby maintain a register of significant laws and regulations that are applicable to the management okay it has to be maintained by the management next engage legal advisors okay management has to engage legal advisors for taking advices relating to compliance with laws and regulations and for taking advice advices relating to the types of laws that are applicable on the manage uh, on the entity's business area and develop a code of conduct okay management has to develop a code of conduct let's say in order to avoid or in order to prevent uh, women harassment in the working area okay there will be a particular law to prevent women harassment in the working area now to comply with this law management can develop a code of conduct okay and it can implement in the company okay that would be example of developing and publicizing a code of conduct now once the code of conduct is developed and publicized it is not enough management also should uh, train the employees okay employees are properly trained to understand the code okay just implementing the code is not sufficient management should take care that the employees have actually understood what is uh, what is the requirement of the code of conduct okay management should also train the employees on that code of conduct and after training management should also monitor compliance with code okay management has to check whether the employees are following this code of conduct or not okay around this code of conduct only there are three points first one develop and publish this code of conduct next one employees are properly trained to understand this code of conduct and third one monitor compliance with code of conduct okay next constitute an appropriate system of internal controls okay the the management can develop internal controls uh, in the entity in order to comply with laws and regulations okay next monitoring legal requirement and ensuring that operating procedures are designed to meet this requirement see now first of all entity should understand what are the requirements of particular law okay what should be the compliances that the entity has to follow in relating to particular law and the entity should design its operational procedure in such a way that once this uh, procedure is followed the law will be automatically uh, automatic automatically co uh, complied okay the requirements of this law has to be implemented in the 
operating procedure of the entity okay basically operating procedure is the procedure that will be internally followed by the entity to perform the tasks okay now the requirements of the law has to be uh, implemented in this operating procedure only okay thereby once the employees follow this operating procedure for performing the tasks the law will be uh, automatically get complied with okay in such a way the operating procedures must be prepared by the management hope this is clear next auditors responsibility okay we have seen the responsibility of the management for complying with laws and regulations now the responsibility of the ma uh, auditor to detect non compliance with laws and regulations let us see first of all basically auditor is not responsible for preventing non compliance okay auditor the it is not in the hands of the auditor to see that uh, management will comply with the laws and regulations okay auditor is having nothing to do with whether uh, management will comply or will not comply the law okay auditor is concerned only with checking whether the management has complied with law or not okay but he cannot force the management to comply with the law okay now the auditor is not having any responsibility for preventing non compliance okay he is having only responsibility to check whether the management has complied with law or not that's it his responsibility is confined to that now instead what he can do is first of all now the auditor responsibility is to detect whether there are any non compliances of law now for this if he wants to detect first of all he has to understand the requirements of law okay and he should also understand what are the laws and regulations that are applicable on the entity thereby auditor has to first of all understand legal and regulatory framework applicable to the entity and how entity is complying with it okay this is a self explanatory point next in case of directly related loss okay in case of directly related loss what is the responsibility of the auditor okay in case of directly related loss the auditor has to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence that the entity has complied with that law okay in case of loss that are having direct effect on the financial statements auditor need to get a sufficient appropriate audit evidence that management has complied with such type of law okay that is relating to loss having direct effect on financial statements in case of other loss okay in case of loss that are not having direct effect on financial statements what will be the auditor's responsibility in that case auditor's responsibility is to inquire with management those charged with governance and regulatory uh, authorities to identify whether there are any non compliances okay if you see in the first case auditor will uh, check for the compliance of the law in the second case auditor will check for the non compliance of the law okay in the first case auditor uh, requires that management must comply with law that is the reason why he checks whether the management has complied with law or not whereas in the second case auditor will just check whether there are any non compliances okay in case there are any non compliances then auditor will see whether the entity has made sufficient provisions for the penalties relating to such non compliances okay hope this is clear next and auditor must remain alert to the possibility that other audit procedures may bring instances of non compliances okay this would be example of professional skepticism okay he need to be alert throughout the audit in order to identify whether there are any uh, instances of non compliances that would be a professional skepticism auditor needs to maintain the quality of professional skepticism in order to identify whether there are any non compliances of laws and regulations hope that is clear next auditor needs to obtain written representation from management okay written representation of what that all known instances of non compliances have been disclosed to the auditor okay the auditor has to obtain a written representation from the management stating that management has disclosed to the auditor all the instances of non compliances that were known to the management hope this is clear next 
indicators of non compliance is okay what are the indications that may show or that will indicate the possibility of non compliance with laws and regulations basically this question has been asked uh, uh, quite many times in the examination let us see investigations by regulatory or government organizations okay uh, some regulatory or government organizations have conducted investigations on the organization quite frequent uh, quite frequently in the year then this will indicate that the management or the entity might not have complied with some of the laws or regulations that is the reason why there were some investigations against the entity okay this is the first factor or first indicator of non compliance with laws and regulations next payment for unspecified services okay in the bank statement of the entity there are certain payments that were made but the reason why those payments uh, are made is not being specified by the management even this also indicates uh, some uh, non compliance with any law or regulation next sales commission or agent fee appears excessive okay sales commission means for selling the products of the entity it the entity will pay commission to the agents now this commission which is being paid to the agents is very excessive when you compared when you compare it with the uh, normal market rates okay even this might be a possible indicator of non compliance with laws or regulation next purchases at above market price okay entity is purchasing the goods at a price which is higher than the market price next unusual payments towards legal and retainership fees okay there are unusual huge amounts of payments to the advocates and to the legal representatives okay it might indicate that entity has appointed these advocates or legal uh, representative to represent the entity in relation to any uh, you know pending suits against the ent entity okay even this will be one of the indicator of non compliance with laws or regulations next unusual transactions with companies registered in tax havens okay entity is conducting unusual transactions with companies which are incorporated in tax havens that means like uh, countries like cuba which is a tax haven next adverse media comment comments okay uh, there are adverse comments against the entity that are being circulated in the media even this shows non compliance with laws and regulations next payments without proper exchange control documentation okay that means uh, for the foreign payments are not being made through authorized dealers okay you are using hawala transactions for uh, paying the foreign payments this might also indicate uh, some of the non compliances with laws or regulations next unauthorized or improperly recorded transactions okay transactions are not being properly recorded payment for goods or services made other than to the country from which goods or services originated okay you are purchasing the goods or services from one country and the payment relating to these goods or services is being made to some other country okay these are the indications of non compliance with laws or regulations okay next the final part reporting of non compliance okay if auditor finds any non compliance with laws or regulations how he need to report basically he need to report within the entity okay how he has to communicate within the entity how he has to report in the audit report and how he has to communicate with the regulatory bodies there are three aspects first of all within the entity if auditor finds any non compliance with laws or regulations then to whom he has to communicate within the entity first of all he has to communicate to those charged with governance okay immediately if he finds any non compliance with laws or regulations he, may, he has to immediately communicate with the those charged with governance and if those charged with governance are involved in that non compliance okay auditor finds that this non compliance with law or regulation is intentional okay those charged with governance have intentionally not complied with this law or regulation in that case the auditor has to communicate this matter to next higher level authority that is present in the organization example would be audit committee okay in case 
there is no audit committee in the organization in that case the auditor has to seek legal advice of how to go ahead with this matter okay that is within the entity now how he has to report in the audit report now if the non compliance uh, the auditor has obtained sufficient and appropriate audit evidence relating to non non compliance okay he is having uh, audit evidence that the entity has not complied with particular law and he finds that such non compliance has been not adequately reflected in the financial statements okay let's say entity has not complied with uh, some particular law let's say some child labor law okay child labor law if it is not complied with child labor law penalty has to be paid the entity has uh, made provision for penalties in the financial statements in that case the entity not complied with law but such non compliance has been adequately disclosed or provided for in the financial statements in this case the auditor will not be having any problem okay the auditor is completely okay with this okay even though entity not complied with the uh, law it has made sufficient provision in the financial statements for the penalties then the auditor is not having any problem but let's say in the second case the entity has not made sufficient provision in the financial statements for the penalty okay entity has not made sufficient provision in this case the auditor has a problem okay because entity has not complied with some child labor law but this non compliance has not been appropriately disclosed in the financial statements in that case auditor will give either qualified or adverse opinion in his financial statements okay when the qualified opinion will be given when the non compliance is material but not pervasive in that case qualified opinion will give when the non compliance the misstatement due to non compliance is both material and pervasive in that case he will give adverse opinion hope this is clear next now in the first case okay in this case the auditor is having audit evidence that management has not complied with certain laws but in the second case the auditor is not having any audit evidence that the management has not complied with the laws or regulation okay the management has put a uh, limitation on the auditor okay due to this limitation auditor is not in a position to obtain audit evidence of whether management has complied with any law or not or has not complied with any law in that case what the auditor will do is he will either give disclaimer of opinion or a qualified opinion okay when he will give disclaimer of opinion when the misstatements due to non compliance are both material and pervasive in that case he will give disclaimer of opinion when the misstatements due to non compliance is material but not pervasive in that case he will give qualified opinion hope this is clear that is a reporting part in the audit report next regulatory bodies in case of communication to regulatory bodies relating to non compliance with laws or regulation auditor has to determine whether there is any specific responsibility that has been placed on the auditor to report to the regulatory authorities okay in case there is any specific responsibility only then he will report otherwise he will not report basically he will not communicate okay by this we have completed revision of sa 250 in the next class we will be revising sa 260